All right, hello. I will let you kind of check in. Let me know how you're doing today. I'm going to go with super excited to do some math. Um, so we're going to be starting about parabolas today. So did I say parabolas? I meant to say hyperbolas today. This is equation of the hyperbola that's shown to the left. Compare that to the ellipse. Well, the main difference is the minus sign instead of a plus. The graph also is as a discontinuity. Um, there's actually a couple asymptotes here. We're going to talk about those in just a second, but an ellipse is continuous and this is not continuous. Okay? Uh, neither one of them would be a function because it wouldn't pass the vertical line test, but um, the main one is that minus sign. So, compare the coordinates to the center. And what do you notice? Well, with the 3, negative 2. My x is paired up with the 3. y plus 2, if I were to solve that, I would get negative 2. That is my center. So it's kind of the same setup that a center of a, an ellipse would have. This is the center of your hyperbola, and it's between the two vertex. I'm going to kind of go over some extra information on this one. Um, it'll kind of help you out a little bit later. If you know this right here, I have x minus 3, and that's over 16. I'm going to think of that 16 as 4 squared. Well, it's underneath the x. It's in the denominator of the x term. That tells me horizontal. So that means that I would be going right 4 units and left 4 units from the center. Then I look underneath my y term, and I've got 25. If I could, wanted to think about that, I can think of that as 5 squared. So I would go up 5 units from the center and down 5 units from the center. And you're probably going, well, shoot, that just puts a couple dots. That doesn't tell me a lot. Well, I could then draw a rectangle. Through those points, those midpoints. And um, once I have those rectangles, then I can go ahead and draw an asymptote. Those asymptotes are going to go through the corners of that rectangle. Uh, it's easier to draw using the um, tool that does a straight line. If I do this by hand, they look horrible. So those are your asymptotes. Um, we're going to be worrying about writing the equations for those shortly. But this is kind of what the key points are. If you were to graph, you'd graph the center. Look underneath your x, that tells you your horizontal right and left. Look underneath the y, that tells you your vertical up and down. Draw a rectangle. Draw asymptotes through the corners of that rectangle. And then you can sketch your hyperbola. So we're going to be really focused on a couple um, main things about this. In the past, I focused more on the graphing. This year, I'm not focus, focused as much on the graphing. So one thing that you were going to really do focus on is the vertex. And that's kind of the turning point of the hyperbola. OK? So and that's really easy to find. So we already know our center was at 3, negative 2. And because these open right or left, um, that distance is going to be horizontal. And let's change the color so it matches up. Underneath the x is 4 squared. So you're traveling 4 units there. 
and from the center to the left, you're traveling four units. So it doesn't ask us to, but I'm going to go ahead and write what that vertex would be. That vertex here is going to be 7, negative 2. And what you can do is just take 3 plus 4. That's where that 7 comes from. Here, my other vertex is going to be negative 1, negative 2. And all I'm doing is taking 3 minus 4, and that's where that negative 1 comes from. All right. Uh, the big one that we're going to do right here is um, the slope. Well, I'm getting ahead of myself. Is finding the equations of the asymptote. So we need to find that slope. And 1, 2, 3, 4... Five up, and it looks like I'm going over four. So my slope is five over four. Um, if I did it on this one, it would just be a negative five over four. And if you notice the relationship there, um, slope is always like the difference of your y's over the difference of your x's. Well, in this case, I'm going from that center, and I'm going up 5, right 4. Uh, I'm going to use point slope form to start with this. And when I do that, if you don't remember what point slope form is, it's y minus y sub 1 equals m times x minus x sub 1. So my slope is 5 fourths, and the x sub 1, y sub 1 that I'm going to use is going to be my center. And I'm going to, that center again is 3 negative 2. So then I can just plug in my important information. I'm just going to hit control C. Feeling a little bit lazy on this. And my y sub 1 is negative 2. I could put y minus negative 2. It's kind of awkward. My slope is 5 fourths. And my x sub 1 is 3. If I were to simplify that entirely, use a distributive property, then subtract 2, I get y minus or y equals 5 fourths x minus 23 over 4. So that's telling me my y intercept right there. If you put negative 5.75, I'm okay with that as well. And you would follow the same process to do the other line as well. So this kind of just sums up what we did. However, I will say I got this slide off um, the internet and I did not notice it and I'm kind of mad at myself that I did not notice this until I started working out some of the problems. They use HK as your center, which I agree with. However, they paired the Y with the H. Your um, K is your uh, Y coordinate. Kenzie Moisner, if you are still in the building, please Sorry come about to that the there. office. Mackenzie Moisner, if you are in the building, please I'm here at school, the and they office. are doing overhead announcements. So you can use slope intercept or point slope. I typically stick with the point slope because I think it's a little bit easier if you're given a point and a slope to use that. All right, so on this one, how does this graph compare to the previous one? Well, it opens up and down. Um, and the Y term 
comes first. So if you notice that your Y is first, it's going to open up and down. If your X comes first, it's going to open right or left. So on this one, underneath the Y is 9 or 3 squared. And they're counting by 2's here. So you're going up 3, down 3 to your vertex. Which is actually the next question. How long to the vertex? 3 and 3. I know when we did this in class, I had a lot of people putting down 1.5. Notice that each hash mark is actually 2. They're counting by 2's here. And then if we wanted to find those vertex, well, my center, and I should have talked about this, is negative 1, 3. If I'm going to make a mistake, it's usually writing those backwards because I get myself in a hurry. And I just look at that 3, but that's paired with the y, so it goes second. That 1, um, or negative 1, needs to come first. So we're going up or down, so my y values are changing. So that's going to be negative 1, 6, right there. I just added 3 to my y value. And if I subtract, I'm going to get negative 1, 0. That's going to be my second vertex. And again, I think this is some repeat information that we've kind of gone over. How far are points D and C from the center, or D and E? Six units. It's the number underneath the X, so that tells me my horizontal, my right and left. Um, so if I were to sketch a triangle then, not triangle, a rectangle. It's the end of the day, I'm making silly mistakes. Hopefully that'll be the last one. Um, what do you notice? Well, the asymptotes pass through the corners of the rectangle. Every once in a while I get somebody who will say, well, they're perpendicular to each other or something like that. The asymptotes are rarely going to be perpendicular to each other. So, on this one, and this is kind of cool because you can check yourself. They give you the equation right there. The center, make sure you put your x-coordinate first, is negative 5, 3. And it plots that for you. My vertex, will I be going up? So my x is going to stay the same. And that first, first vertex, looks like I'm going to be adding 5 to that. So 3 plus 5 is 8. Yep, looks like I hit it. And then from the center to the other vertex is still 5 units. So I'm going to subtract 5 from it. And that will give me negative 5. Negative 2. Let's see if it hits it. It does. So I've got those two vertex correct. Um, find, examine the slopes of those asymptotes. Well, here it looks like I'm going up 1, 2, 3, 4, over 2. So 4 over 2. Up 4, left 2. So negative 4 over 2. So it looks like positive 2 and negative 2. Rise over run. Um, so I want to find those equations. I should have looked at that a little bit closer. So I need to know that center. And let's go ahead and I'm just going to write the generic equation first. x minus h quantity squared over a squared minus, if you notice I put the x first because it's opening right or left, y minus k squared over b squared. 
and that equals one. So I'm going to start with my center. Looks like my center is negative one. Oh, look at that scaling. So negative one, two. And the distance from the center to the vertex is one, one, two. Again, I almost screwed up with my spacing. And I would have an easier time on this if I could draw. So, but it looks like I would be going up right there to six. And then over, and then straight down to right there, because they're going to pass through the corners. So find that distance right there, and that's two, four. And that still gave me the same slope that I was talking about before. So there I go, there's my equation. I'm going to skip the part about the foci because we didn't really talk about that in class today. And then you can put me, put any questions that you have for me and I will get back to you. Enjoy.